Hey boys and girls, fly fishers, both male and female and whatever. I've got a story here that's taken me a while to put together. This is about counting. One thing we never do as fly fishers is count the number of fly rods we have. And the second thing we never do is count the number of hats we have. Ball caps. When I say hats, I mean ball caps. Hats are hats, ball caps are ball caps. But sometimes I use the word interchangeably. So never count your ball caps this goes back to when i got back from south padre island fish camp south got into my closet and it kind of had a different look to it uh, from when i left and my uh, sweet sweet significant other had taken the time to make a little more room in my closet by um, taking some of my ball caps down and that led to a whole situation where I kind of had to thin the herd. So, I, I, you know, the history of ball caps for me goes back to fly fishing when I started almost 20 years ago. Um, ball caps kind of turned into the business card of the 21st century, except that you pay premium prices to advertise other people's businesses. Funny how that works. So... So getting back to my closet, instead of going off on another tangent, getting back to my closet, about 60% of my hats were kind of off to the side. I don't want to do numbers. We don't want to do numbers, but 60% amounted to, I don't know, about 40 hats. No, yeah, about 40 hats. I still had a few left um, that were hanging. But I decided to rearrange everything, take all the hats down, and you know, I wear my hats constantly. I don't know about you guys, but I wear my hats all the time. And you know what that leads to? If you folks, you young folks with a lot of hair, boys and girls, hot weather and ball caps leads to balding. Yeah, it may look cool, but there's only two kinds of people that wear ball caps. Those that have hair and those that don't. <laughs> And one day, you're going to go from one category to the other. And it's probably not going to be a situation unless you wear some kind of a dreadlock wig like I'm going to be wearing this summer, coming summer. Uh, unless you wear one of those, uh, the hair's going away. So, along with uh, eliminating some ball caps, and you know, I get a lot of questions about my ball caps and about my straw hats. This is a one that I'm keeping, even though it's a bourgeoisie Howler Brother hat. It uh, doesn't say Howler all over it, which is a bonus for me. So I've got a couple of Howlers that I'm keeping. A bunch of them I'm getting rid of. Um, but what really makes a ball cap cool, I mean, you know, not cool like temperature, but cool looking. It's got to be unique for me. I don't want my, my buddy's ball cap. I want my own ball cap. Number two, maybe like a, made out of a good fabric or something like that, you know. So you got a limited edition probably, great fabric, and it has to fit right. It cannot, any under any circumstances, none whatsoever, can it be bourgeoisie. And we're going to talk more bourgeoisie in a minute. But I wear my caps, ball caps, and hats constantly. So I constantly shop for my next ball cap. And I actually have to replace one that got blown away the other day on Bodark Lake. If you find it, I'll give you a dollar for it. It's probably covered with slime. But that hat was a really cool one made on the East Coast. Kind of like Papa wore, you know. So this one's all canvas. It doesn't have a shiny bill on it. But it's a Papa hat. It comes from Quaker Marine. I'll put a link to Quaker Marine. The key to that hat, great fit, made in the USA, and, and the bill is extra long. So, I, uh, I think that the number goes down, but the quality goes up. The cost, that was my most expensive hat that blew off, that blew away. It was just, I took it off to do something, shoot some photos, and uh, we took off at 70 miles an hour, and it was gone. So... I also wear the cheap foam hats as well, you know, and those are uh, something that makes me look like a grandpa, which, you know, 
doesn't bother me so much. That's what hats go back to for me is grandpa days when my grandfather had an auto parts store and he would get cases of these hats with his name on it and he didn't sell them. He gave them away because it was advertising for his business. My, how things have changed, haven't they? If I made ball caps for Texas, here's how it would go. Okay, it needs to be, has to be two hats. I'm sorry, we're gonna start counting again already. One is mesh, kind of like a feed store mesh, front to back, you know, and maybe a cool Texas patch or some kind of artwork on it and, and just something that lets a lot of air in. But the long bill, that's the hard part. You don't find feed store hats with long, not, virtually no ball cap. This one has a long, long bill on it, but virtually no ball cap is perfect because of the length of the bill. Your nose gets burned. Remember that. That's why we wear big straws like I have. Um, you know, the second, we'll call it second, third, whatever. I need and I like waxed canvas. And I have a few waxed canvas hats made um, up in, well, they used to be made in the Northwest, but now they are probably made in China, so I, I don't buy them anymore. The ones that were made in America are, they're 10, 15 years old and they're still going. So that tells you something right there. My question for you is why do you guys and why do you girls wear ball caps? For guys, the number one reason is to hide a balding head. I'm sorry. He may look good, but when he pulls that hat off, the hair may come with it and he has nothing underneath. So be aware, girls. You know, some have it and some don't. Girls, I know you got hair under there. You're just trying to have a control of it on maybe a bad hair day, or maybe you just like hats too. That's cool. There doesn't have to be a reason to like ball caps. If you watch lately, I've taken to designing my own ball caps, and they're kind of random right now, and they don't have any traction. I would, uh, if you want to buy, if you see one of my ball caps, one says FC, FC on it. That's one of my designs and uh, more designs will be coming when I need ball caps. We, we might need a rain cap at this rate. It looks like it's gonna rain. Uh, but it's a very expensive proposition to make your own hats one at a time. And it's not getting any cheaper. You can expect it to go up in 2025 because of the current situation. So that alone has slowed my ball cap consumption to a trickle. The ball caps I do have left, I've managed to break down into categories. Sentimental and travel, mostly breweries, imagine that. Unusual, functional, and meh, they need to go to painting the house. So that last category, meh, out of here. You know, I mentioned Howler earlier, and the truth is, I was a Howler geek until two things happened about the same time. Howler became a flagship of the fly fishing bourgeoisie and the prices followed the set that symbolism to another income level and I couldn't get there. So that's pretty tough. So it's bye bye Howler. I only have a very rarely seen uh, Howler and there are a couple that will never leave and they will, and, they, and like I said earlier, they don't say Howler all over them. That's a big deal. As long as it doesn't say Howler all over it, I'm pretty happy. Uh, but generally people want it to say Howler and that's bourgeoisie. So I have some great and used Howler ball caps that need to be worn. I'm going to give some away to family. I've got family standing in line. And here's your chance to get some limited run, limited design, old, worn by me, Howler hats, ball caps. So think about it. I'll put a link down there. I'm selling them off. And uh, 10, 15 bucks, make me an offer, and no worthy offer will be refused. Howlers have got the gold. Anyway, that's my story about hats. I wish I had a better explanation for why hats are so fascinating to me, but they really are. Um, you know, you'll find that I switch from straw to felts in the, uh, in the cold weather here. Although we're not going to have any cold weather, it doesn't look like. I'm watching birds out there just having a good old time. Uh, this year, I guess. Who knows? But anyway, thanks for watching this episode about hats. Like and subscribe if you wish. Please watch all of these videos to the end, the bitter end sometimes. And I hope you enjoyed um, the little 
escapades to show you the different hats and things like that on this video. We'll see you next time on Texas Flycaster YouTube channel.